Hello, in this video, you will learn how to create materials and textures for your 3D objects in the new Blender 2.8. So let's get straight into it. The workflow for creating textures and materials in Blender 2.8 is actually quite different to the way you would do it in uh, previous versions of Blender. So if you've come from Blender 2.7, then this video may also be useful to you as well. Instead of using the cube, I want to use a sphere. So just uh, press X delete, then shift A mesh UV sphere. I'm also going to just lightly set up the lighting and, the, and our world so that we can see our materials better. So I'm just going to go ahead and change this to look dev mode. And uh, we're going to keep, uh, actually we'll use the uh, the HDR map for, for this instance and we'll also use the scene lights. In other words, we're using this light over here to light our three objects. So I might just put one light over here, quickly set up a basic three point light setup. So maybe one light there and one light at the back. Okay, so nothing fancy. Um, also, I might just position the camera a little closer to the object. Oops, Alt R. Uh, also, I might just go ahead and change this shading to smooth because I don't want to see these uh, these lines over here. So let's go W smooth shading. I'm just going to go ahead and pretend that my 3D object is just this and I want to go ahead and start to create materials and textures for it. So in, in order to do that, I would go ahead and uh, go into the UV editing workspace. So basically what this does is we first need to uh, create a UV map for our 3D object. What that means is you can sort of imagine uh, laying this object flat in a 2D space so that we can paint on this 2D space and then apply that onto our 3D object. So uh, we need to make some cuts. I mean, the way we have it right now is uh, probably not the, the most optimal. Uh, we probably want to do some uh, cuts in order to make it much more optimal than that. So the way I usually like to do it for this case is I like to separate it into two different islands. So Alt right click this. Then I press Shift Alt right click to select the loop on the other side, like so. Oops, I don't think that's quite the other side. So let me just press Control Z and Alt Shift right click this one. Okay, so that we have a complete loop going around our uh, ball. I just want to imagine sort of cutting with a with a pair of scissors along this line around. Uh, this ball over here so that we can flatten it out on our 2d plane over here so in order to do that just press ctrl e edge data and then mark scene so all i need to do to uv unwrap this is press u and then unwrap so as you can see over here it's unwrapped it as one ball so for example i'm just going to directly select on the the uv islands over here so press alt a to deselect everything the same kind of control the same kind of shortcuts like you can do over here and then press L so hover over your mouse over just anywhere here and press L and then I'm gonna press G or move to move the island over here so you'll see that they are now separate into two different islands so this island probably represents this side this island probably represents this side so what I want to do is I'm just gonna go ahead and press A to select everything and then I'm just gonna go ahead and scale it down like so and then just move it in place so that it fits our 2D, 2D space over here. Okay. So around about there, maybe I want to scale it down. You can also press S, the same kind of shortcut keys like you would use in the 3D viewport. G to grab, R to rotate. G to grab, R to rotate, S to scale. Okay, so once they're around about fitting the uh, islands, I'm gonna go ahead and press Alt A to deselect everything. So that's it. That is the basics of how to UV unwrap an object in Blender. Now that we have a UV map, we can now start to actually paint textures and materials onto our 3D object. So in order to paint uh, materials and textures onto our 3D object, we need to switch the workspace yet again into the texture paint workspace. So here is where we'll actually do the magic of actually starting to paint our textures. So, uh, first thing we want to do is maybe over here I might pull out a, another window so we can see better what we're doing. And I'm just going to go ahead and switch this one to the uh, shader editor. So this is where we create the shader. Now let's start to actually paint our materials. So in order to create a material for this, right now it's just uh, a default purple, but we, we don't want it to be a default purple, we want to actually start creating materials. So I want to go over to the material tab over here and hit new. So now we have a new material for this uh, 3D object, which is uh, the principled shader. 
you can also see that being applied over here as well. To actually paint the textures, I'm going to go ahead and go to this tab over here, which is the tool tab of the properties window. And then I'm going to start to add uh, painting slots. So let's start off with say the base color. The first thing that I want to do is I want to start to paint the, the color for my 3D object. So we'll go to add paint slot, base color. We need to choose the size of our image. Uh, higher resolution will give you much more crisper, uh, crisper details in your image, and it will also look good when you make uh, when you do close-ups. So if you go 2K or even 4K, uh, that can look quite good. Uh, lower resolution will obviously look more pixelated and more blurry. Also keep in mind that the higher you set this value, uh, the more storage space is going to take up, and the, obviously the more memory it will take up when in when you do rendering and things like that. So it's kind of a balancing act between the both. The base color, uh, this is really up to you. Maybe I might set it as, uh, I don't know, my ball, I might, I might just create like a light blue, my base color, and then hit okay. Notice straight away that the object looks weird. It's sort of changed shape and looks quite odd. Um, I, I, maybe this won't happen in your version of Blender, but I am using the, the alpha version of Blender 2.8, so it is quite buggy, so I just go ahead and switch the shading mode to the look dev mode, and uh, that tends to fix the issue for me straight away. Okay, so now that we've added our base color, um, you'll notice over here in the available paint slots, we have our base color applied there with the light blue material. That also corresponds over here as well. So if I go ahead and click this base color material, you'll see the map that it creates. Uh, it is highly recommended that you go ahead and save the image. So just go to image, save as, or save a copy. Because in the instance that Blender does crash, you will also lose this image as well. So better to save a copy just in case, which I'll do right now. Okay, cool. Now that I've uh, saved my image, we can start to play around with these tools to uh, modify our textures a little bit. We can use a text drawer right now to start to paint our other colors. So for example, let's say I want to play around with some green. So just go ahead and select the green over here and just go ahead and start painting wherever you like. You can either paint on the 3D object directly or you can paint on your 2D map and it should reflect somewhere on your 3D object as well. In, and this is all done in real time. So maybe I want to paint something like this. I'm basically, looks like I'm basically creating my version of a world map. As you can see, I've just very quickly painted some random blobs to sort of represent planet Earth, which obviously planet Earth doesn't have these weird shaped countries. Maybe it's uh, another planet in another galaxy somewhere else. But anyways, as long as you get the idea, you can just paint directly there and see your results in real time. Um, you can obviously go ahead and even change colors. I might put white there and maybe paint Antarctica. If you're more of a texture painting artist, you can also blend uh, different different colors as well. So for example, just like if you use Photoshop or GIMP, uh, you, you can add layers to sort of darken the colors or add lightness specular to the colors. You can sort of do that in Blender 2.8 as well. Um, all you need to do is uh, go ahead and create, say, another base color. Um, this time we will keep it at uh, pure black. Actually, no, not white, but pure black. Um, if you want to make it darker, uh, we generally use a black colored map. Uh, and I'll call this one something like base color darken. So now that you have the shader over here, you can see that straight away uh, it's applied our normal, uh, our normal base color into the, the shader over here, the principal BST of shader, which is the default shader in Blender 2.8. Now that we added our new uh, base color darken, uh, we can mix these two together. So to do that, just go Shift A over here, uh, Texture, oh, sorry, Color, Mix RGB, and I'm just going to put that there, and then add this color over here. And what, what we want to do is we want to multiply. Okay, so right now you see nothing there. It's because um, uh, this image, the base color, is being multiplied by this image, and black represents zero in Blender. Actually, I think I've got it the other way around. Maybe I need to set this to white. Go back to paint again. Black represents zero in the Blender world. So any color times zero will make it zero. So if I multiply that one, it'll make it zero, completely black. So what I need to do is I need to change this to white because white represents one. So any color pixel there times one, it will stay the original color. So let's go white and let's fill that. Shouldn't be black, my apologies. So now when I go uh, zero, 
and one it doesn't do anything because when we multiply the original color with one it stays the original color so now if i go ahead and actually paint uh, textures so if i go, make, go to the green again and paint over here you can see that it's starting to darken because we're multiplying over it so we can use this darken feature really if you're a texture painting artist you probably already know this but if you're not uh, you can use this obviously to create uh, shading effects so I might now use this time to show you how to add variations to your brushes so perhaps you want to use a texture mask to make your brushes look more noisy so in order to do that just go to the brush settings over here and scroll down to where you see texture mask and hit new and then in the properties window change over to the textures tab uh, and then go ahead and change to brush mask noisy brush you can load your own image if you have one but I'm just going to go ahead and use the built-in uh, procedural texture that Blender provides uh, called clouds. So now if I paint my textures, you can see that we have a, a bit more noise to our textures, which makes can make our texture painting a lot more interesting. Okay, so that is how you paint the base color. Next, I want to look at how to uh, work on the other ones. So for example, I can add some, let's say some specularity. So this, is, this controls sort of the, the shininess of our object. So if I go ahead and press OK on that one, um, I can paint some shininess. I'm just going to go ahead and paint a bit of shininess on our countries. You can do that quite easily. It's not as visible, but it, it is there. If you view it from an angle, it is actually there. It's actually the roughness that will actually make it look like a mirror. So we've now very, very quickly added a, a bit of shininess to our, our 3D object. We can also go ahead and add a bit of roughness. This is where it will make our objects look um, reflective. So if I press OK with that one, and now if I, um, oh, we can see the reflection map straight away. Black represents fully, fully reflective, so, you can, so it looks like we're looking at a mirror. Uh, white represents not reflective at all. So if I, for example, use the white color right now, and I paint over there directly, it takes away the reflectiveness and looks quite rough. Uh, and you need to make sure that, and this will only work if you have the specular. So for example, the ocean is not reflective at all. Uh, it's because we have no specularity there. So if I go ahead and paint some specularity there, it will now make that part of our 3D object uh, reflective as well. You can also add, uh, for example, bump. So if I go ahead and add a bump map to this one, so as you can see, when I add each type of material over here, it automatically adds it to our node system. So we don't really need to know the node system that much. But obviously it's advantageous if you do know how to use a node system, because that, that's when we can start to um, mix and modify different textures and things like that. So now that we have a bump map uh, added over here, it's automatically added the bump uh, node for us and set everything to like non-color data and all that other stuff. So you don't need to even think about that stuff. So we see our bump map over here. Is we generally want to have the color of our original map to be gray. So that's 50% uh, red, 50% green, and 50% white. So it's exactly halfway gray. So I'm just gonna go ahead and fill that map. Uh, it does nothing to our 3D object, but uh, now anything that I paint uh, that is white will add a protrusion on your 3D object. Uh, anything that's sort of black will add a dent in your 3D object. So as you can see, when I paint more black, it adds a dent. And since I still have that, that uh, noisy brush mask, it's looking quite noisy. For example, in this model, I might create mountains. Uh, if you're modeling a character, you can create pimples or, uh, you know, acne scars and things like that. So go ahead, have fun with it. In Blender 2.8, it's a lot easier and you'll create awesome looking results in very little time. So I hope this tutorial has been helpful and I hope to see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.